The 2012 London Olympics will be the first social media games ever held. For the first time in the history of the games, sports fans around the world will be able to follow their favourite sportsmen and women on every step of their Olympic journeys. My Twitter account is at TJBFitToday. I do have Twitter. Um, I think it's a great idea. Um, you know, during the Olympics, people are going to be tweeting, you know, the activities, what's happening, and it's, it's a great way for the general public to to get some insight as to what's actually happening behind, you know, closed doors, so, so to speak, um, regarding the athletes. Yeah, I've got Twitter feeds. Like, I just basically like put my name down, like Mr. Iantful, that's my last name, and just make sure people know that what I'm getting up to prior to my trials. Like, for example, I went away to America, updated my training, updated my performance level, updated certain things which people can know what I'm getting up to in athletics. Through the track and field world, it is, you know, I don't know many athletes that haven't got a Twitter account. You know, we talk between ourselves. It's kind of a, a track and field community on Twitter. So, yeah, every, I think it, I don't know too many people who haven't got a Twitter account. And given the interactive nature of social media, the London Olympics will allow people around the globe to come together and participate in the Olympics like never before. Not only can audiences maintain a dialogue with their favourite athletes, they can interact with each other across countries and continents, drawn together by a common interest. Updates from the athletes will be boosted by thousands of tweets, photographs and amateur video footage from people actually sitting in the audiences, watching the games as they happen. Pictures, you know are very interesting you know you, you take pictures of you know what you, your view is of your room and all that kind of stuff it takes the general public into your shoes into the olympics so to speak cl much closer than you would just from looking on the telly so and athletes in the olympic village for example you know when they're not training or competing they have plenty of time do you know what i mean and a lot happens and you know athletes would want to share that with people um, you know, depending on what the restrictions are, um, people, athletes would want to show, you know, well, this is my swimming pool, um, ice bath today, or massage, or whatever it is. And I think it would be great for the public to be able to see what actually goes into preparation for any events. You know, it's not just turn up on a day and just run. You know, you, you, might, need, you might need a bit of table tennis just to relax you. You might, you know, dance, listen to music, or you might go into an ice bath after training. You know, I mean, all those things, I think, uh, will be great to get the public behind, you know, the athletes actually competing. I'd say mm, maybe half of people I follow on Twitter are fellow athletes and uh, sports people, yeah, and people I look up to, yeah. And I follow a lot of people in track and field, so, you know, the, the, the GB favourites in terms of Jessica Ennis, Phillips Adoe, Di Green... Uh, Tasha Danvers, Dwayne Chambers, uh, those kind of athletes. And in terms of other sports, um, you know, I like to follow a lot of basketball players. A lot of the, the NBA guys, are, you know, the dream team are going to compete. So I like to follow lots of Kobe Bryant, um, LeBron James, those kind of guys, um, just to see what their thoughts are on the Olympics. Because they get quite excited about the Olympics and they do talk about it and tweet about it quite a lot. So I like to see what they've got to say. I mean, it's a... Uh it's kind of a little bit of give and take. Obviously, you have that platform in which you can speak to many fans, many people who are, you know, following you. Um, so you want to be responsible as far as that's concerned. But at the same time, you know, it's not exactly natural or for some people, it's not normal everyday life to to do that. So it's kind of like a give and take um, and you know, a lot of times that's what you know that's what the fans want. If you're at a championship meet and they just kind of want to, you know, hear about your preparation, you might do a little bit of that. But sometimes it can be a bit of a hindrance as well. I think everyone that's uh, an athlete that's using, using Twitter um, is obviously doing doing it with um, in the back of their mind, knowing that everything they say is potentially helpful, or potentially negative. So, in that sense, yeah, it's important that you. Um, you control what you're doing and manage it properly because it you know, opens doors for you and doors for you and it can close doors as well if you mismanage it. So, um, yeah, it's just everybody knows that it's, it could be potentially very good for you. And um, you just got just the, the way you manage the, your account is the important thing. As an athlete, you have a responsibility and you are on a platform. So, unfortunately, 
or fortunately, you can't always say just whatever you want to say, no matter how you're feeling at that point in time or, or what the explanation is behind it. So, there, you know, what, what you say is definitely criticized a little bit more. There's definitely a bit more of an eye on it. So you do have to be very careful. I like to read what other athletes are doing, what other teams are doing, what managers are doing um, within the sport and also other sports. I know personally from the UK squad that they do like to tweet a lot, especially on competition day. <laughs> so you probably get some updates after heats, after semis, how it's gone, how the person feels, whoever the athlete may be. Yeah. And it won't just be ordinary sports fans who use social media to support their favourite teams and favourite athletes. From presidents to prime ministers, Hollywood celebrities to high-profile billionaires, social media will provide a rich mix of content and comment for all. Culture Secretary Jeremy Hunt, the Cabinet Minister leading the delivery of London 2012, is one of a new generation of politicians who already use social media to build a dialogue with their followers. I asked Mr Hunt how he plans to use social media during the Olympics. Um, Twitter I think is brilliant because um, first of all it allows you to follow events in real time so you can actually monitor how people are reacting to a political announcement during the course of the day. You don't have to wait till the 6 o'clock news or the 10 o'clock news. Um, and you can get messages out really quickly and um, I think it's going to be fantastic for the Olympics. Um, this is going to be the first Olympics where the majority of spectators will actually have mobile phones that can take pictures and they'll be able to send those pictures to their friends all over the world immediately and they'll be able to make their comments using social networks, using Twitter um, and I think it's going to make the Olympics come alive for many, many thousands more people. In Team GB will have its own hashtags, most of the different teams within that will have hashtags and many of the individual athletes will have their hashtags on Twitter, their Facebook pages. Um, so it'll be very easy to link into what they're doing and to follow them. And you know, what, when you talk to athletes, what they love and what they thrive on is support from the public. So the more supportive tweets we can give them, it's just another way of showing them how much we're behind them and how much we want them to go for gold and be successful for Britain this summer. The big broadcast networks around the world will no doubt do a good job in giving television audiences an armchair view of Olympic events as they happen. But this time, we can add to that richness a wealth of content generated by the athletes themselves, their coaches, family, friends, followers, stadium audiences and millions of people around the world. Twitter has 300 million users, YouTube nearly 500 million and Facebook is the daddy of them all with more than 800 million users globally. In July 2012, the London Olympics, like no other event before it, will bring the world together via these social media networks. It'll be a fascinating sporting and social media event. Let the games commence.